Hello, and welcome to Hot Tea with Holly. I am Holly, and I help women use strength training and intentional nutrition to really create the body that you need in order to keep up with the life that you love. Welcome to my new show. I'm going to be here every single week enjoying a cup of hot tea and sharing useful tips with you to help you transform your body and your life. So welcome. Today I am having a cup of green tea. No surprise there. Today I am having Harney and Sons Japanese Sencha, which if you know me, you know, this is one of my regular go-to teas. I absolutely love a Japanese Sencha, a really good Japanese Sencha, loose leaf tea, one, I love the flavor of it, but green tea really gives me such a powerful caffeine punch that I love, but I also don't end up with that crash later in the day like I often do with coffee. Now, don't get me wrong. I love my coffee and it serves a purpose and it's there as well, but I do tend to default to the green teas and black tea as often as possible. So welcome. This is my new weekly show. I'm so happy that you are here. And as I said, each week, I'm going to be talking about different relevant topics, bringing you tips and tools that you can use to really help you transform your body so that you can get the body that you need to really live the life that you love. So today I'm super excited because we are going to be talking about transformation. So in a couple of minutes, I'm going to bring on two women from my community who I have watched over the past year, year and a half to two years, really transform their body through the process of strength training and intentional nutrition. And something that I want to be doing more frequently going forward is sharing and celebrating the stories of women in my community and in the world in general, who really are demonstrating that you are not limited by the limitations of your body. And you're definitely not limited by your age or your history of where you've been in your body before. I really want to highlight and show the information to you that whatever body you want, whatever that you're going for, it's absolutely possible. It's simply a function of setting your goals, having the right strategy, having the right determination, and really sticking with it. And this is something that's so important to me. So at the age of 40, just before my 40th birthday, I decided that I really, really wanted to transform my physical body. And I knew that when I did that, my life would change. And so I set out on a very specific training plan and mindset to achieve what a lot of people would look at and say is like the ideal visual aesthetic. I was really going for a certain um, athleticism and body leanness. I wanted to look a certain way. And to my surprise, I was really amazed to find out that through doing that, I changed my life. And it's been a game changer ever since. If you've been in my community for a while, you know a big part of my story, and I'm going to be sharing more of it going forward here in this new series, Hot Tea with Holly. I'm so glad that you are here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As I said, today in a minute, I'm going to be bringing in two women from my community, Heidi Brenner and Jennifer Bean, who have both been in my community for a period of time, quite a while. But in the past year and a half to two years, I've had the opportunity to get them, get to know them a little bit more, but also to train and work with each one of them. And each one of them has really had a very powerful transformation. And they also are able to demonstrate what happens when you find the right strength training protocol and nutrition plan that serves your body that you're really able to stick to over a period of time and get incredible results. So they're going to be sharing their stories and we're going to be talking a little bit about how they did it, where they were beforehand, um, the training plans and the nutrition plans that they used, where they are now, how their life is different, the things that they're involved in. And it's going to be a super, super cool conversation. If you're here with me live, please use the chat box and say hello. And if you're watching this in playback, please do the same. I'm always curious to see who's here live 
and who is here watching and playback. Now, I will be here pretty much every single week going forward, and the format of Hot Tea with Holly is going to be a little bit different than what I've done in the past. So if you've joined me for Tea Time with Holly or Live with Holly, I've now collapsed those two ideas into Hot Tea with Holly, and I'm going to be interviewing people. I'm going to be bringing some of the women from my community in and provide coaching from, for them. And I'm going to be doing some solo episodes where I really bring you some of my best tips that you can use now to really improve how you feel, to build lean muscle mass, to improve your digestion, to get leaner or reduce body fat if that is your, po your potential goal, or even to add some muscle mass. Now, what's super cool is the two women that I'm going to be bringing in today when I started working with them, they both had a goal of adding more muscle, which I think is super cool because I would say the majority of women over the age of 37, which is who I usually talk to and serve here in my community, the majority of women over 37 tend to be so focused on weight loss, weight loss, weight loss, weight loss. I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. I want to see the scale go down. I want to get to a smaller size or whatever it may be. And what's interesting is that about 10% of the people that work with me or in my community have really come to understand the power of strength training. And it's no longer about weight loss because if you approach this from the perspective of improving your lean muscle mass, and improving your body composition, you're going to end up being smaller, tighter, and leaner, and you're going to have better energy, and you're going to feel better, and your self-esteem will go through the roof. You'll avoid injuries. You're going to reduce the risk of um, the common diseases and cardiovascular diseases that a lot of women face. And all of that can be achieved through strength training. Now, I'm all about strength training, but I sit before you here today. I'm clearly not muscle bound. I'm clearly not the visual athlete, um, visual aesthetic of someone who's very committed to strength training. And that's because I know that strength training doesn't have to look super muscular. And one of the things, one of the goals that I have in my community is to really demonstrate to you through myself and the women in my community that when you go after strength training and improving your lean muscle mass, it doesn't mean that you're going to end up big and bulky. Now, if that is your goal, we can certainly do that. But it really does take a lot of strategy, a lot of intention. And oh, by the way, you're not going to stumble upon becoming bulky or adding big muscles like a man, which many women are concerned about. And I certainly understand and respect that concern. So if that's you, part of my goal is to really demonstrate that you can go after building muscle and what you're going to find is that it improves how you feel. It improves how you look. It really does lean to lead to reduced body fat and better body composition. And if you really want to increase your lean muscle mass, we can do that. But it's not going to happen by accident. It's going to be very intentional. So I'm going to be bringing in Jennifer Bean and Heidi Brenner momentarily, if you guys are watching live, and we're going to be talking about their stories because specifically each one of them was interested in building muscle. And what you're going to see is that they too look incredibly athletic, look amazing, got leaner, but they don't really look big and bulky, which a lot of women are really concerned about. So let's get it started. Welcome if you are here live. Hello, Mary. I'm so glad you're here. Hi, Alakan. Welcome. And if you're watching live, please use um, the comment box to let me know. So I am broadcasting using a different software today, and I'm going to be experimenting in the coming weeks um, here with Hot Tea with Holly until I can find the right setup. But part of my goal and part of what I'm going to be doing is recording these episodes so that I can share them with you in other places, YouTube and on my blog and even on 
Facebook, in other places, as well as Instagram. So every week I will be here at this time on Tuesdays at one o'clock on the East Coast to have a cup of tea with you. And if you've brought a cup of tea yourself, please share with me what you are drinking because I am so obsessed with tea. I'm actually obsessed with all hot beverages, by the way. Anything that is caffeinated or non-caffeinated is so my jam. But we're going to be focused on tea because it's such a great boost to your health and it's my love. So if you're here live, please say hello. And if you're watching this in playback, let me know. So let's dive in. I am going to bring Jennifer and Heidi onto the screen with us. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Hi. Oh, good. It's working. I love it. Okay. Hold on. Let me see if I can get you guys. There we go. That's better. I want to have each one of us kind of equally on the screen. Thank you guys for joining me. And for those of you guys that are watching, um, bear with us because this is the first time that I've done this where I've done an interview type um, situation here on any of my live streams. And it's something that I'm going to be doing going forward. So just to tease next week's formal, official kickoff of Hot Tea with Holly. I have an incredible guest coming next week, you guys. I am so excited. Next week, we are going to be talking all about detoxification. And this is something that my community has asked for for a very long period of time. And I finally have it queued up. So do make sure that you mark your calendar for this time next week and join me for another interview style format, just like we're doing today. You know, I'll be honest. Somebody asked, why I was changing the format. I'm going to be honest with you. I've gotten a little lonely doing live with Holly by myself. So if you've been in my community for a while, you know, back in the day, I wasn't by myself when I was doing live with Holly. And it was so much fun because it felt like an event. And since I've been doing it camera facing me, I am such an extroverted person and I like to be with people. And I was just like, you know what? I'm getting a little lonely. I want to change the format. And that is what we're doing today. So welcome, Jennifer. Welcome, Heidi. I'm so glad you guys are here. This is so fun. Thank you for being the first on my soft launch of Hot Tea with Holly. Heidi, I saw you were drinking something. What are you drinking? I am drinking Tulsi with ginger. So um, just plain holy basil, plain old Tulsi. Yep, plain old Tulsi with ginger from my traditional it. medicinals. That's a good one. And, you know, it's it's very stress relieving, soothing yeah. for the adrenals, and yeah. ginger is very good for digestion. Yeah. So it's just a nice, peaceful tea. You know, I'm glad that you mentioned that. Um, Several years ago, when I was really navigating my health struggles, when I didn't know what they were, there was a time when I thought it was all about my adrenals. Um, it was all about so much more than just my adrenals. But I was drinking Tulsi tea, which is also known as holy basil, for those of you guys that are new to this herb. And I remember it really made such a difference for me in terms of energy and stabilizing my blood sugar. So thank you for that reminder, because I haven't had it in a long time. Jennifer, are you having a hot beverage? Or are you just joining us beautifully today? Well, it's 100 degrees here, so I am drinking water. <laughs> are you serious? Is it yeah. really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yikes. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So yeah, we got rain and hot flashes across the United States. So I hear you. Um, some days when it's super, super hot here, this time of day, I will do iced tea. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll brew up my green tea really, really strong, almost like an espresso, and just pour it over ice. And it's one of my absolute favorites. So welcome, everybody. Hello, Mary. Hello, Tracy. Tracy is drinking hot coffee with cocoa, Q-Max supplement, and Q-Armor Medici, which is an adaptogenic mushroom chai flavored. Ooh, I don't know Q-Max and Q-Armor. I'm going to be looking them up. Please feel free to drop a little plug on what these products are because really and truly, if you know me, you know there's a very um, hilarious ongoing conversation about caffeine. Caffeine is not good for me and I should not be drinking it, me. but it is, it, yeah, it's not for most of it's not Heidi. I know it's a big oh. one for you. Um, it's not, for most of us, it's not a great thing. 
you'll know if it is or it isn't. But I got to be honest, you guys, my life is so clean and structured that I allow myself some crutches that I know aren't super healthy, but I do it anyway. And caffeine is my thing. So anyway, let's jump into what I really want to talk about. So if you have not met Jennifer or Heidi, they both have been in my community for a very long time. We go way back. And about um, a year and a half to two months ago, I started to get to know them even better. Both of them have coached with me in different ways, and it's given me an opportunity to really learn about them and watch their journey. The reason why I brought them into this episode today is because I think each one of them has a really powerful story. And those powerful stories really touch upon how otherwise average women are able to accomplish very impressive, extraordinary things. I think a lot of times people look at me and they think, oh, Holly's able to do X, Y, or Z because she's a fitness expert and she's been doing it forever. But I'm different. I'm just a normal person, right? Who doesn't have a super strong education in fitness or whatever it may be. And while Jennifer is a trained personal trainer and does have some education, I think in some ways she really does speak to every woman in what she's been able to accomplish. So I'm going to turn this over so that we can hear a little bit more about their stories. And Jennifer, let's start with you. Um, I, I would love if you would just share a little bit with um, everyone watching and anyone watching in playback a bit about your journey over the past, let's call it year and a half to two years, where were you before you really got serious about your strength training journey? And then what has that journey looked like? And then let's just start with that. We'll do the same with Heidi. Okay. And then after we hear both of your stories, we're going to talk about how your life is different now as a result of those journeys. So Jennifer, tell us about where were you and what has your journey looked like? Okay, um, so I started my strength training journey in December of 19 when I was selected to be a part of the beta test group for the glutes project. Prior to that, I had been a runner since 2008. And um, I mean, I started out with a 5K, then I thought, gee, I wonder if I could do a half marathon. And then I wonder if I could run a full marathon. And so I kind of worked through the process of um, learning more about my own fitness, learning what my body would do. And in the summer of 2019, I actually saw a picture of myself in a bikini and I was like, Oh my gosh, I, that's not the body I was going for. And don't get me wrong. A lot of women would have said, Oh my gosh, you look great. And I, I did look great. I looked fine but I was not where I wanted to be. I knew that it was time to evolve in my journey. And I thought strength training is the way to do that. I know that um, I had learned enough along the way to know that running was not going to support me well into my seventies and eighties. And I knew that through sarcopenia, I was going to continue losing muscle mass. And the only way to try and combat that was to begin strength training. The problem with starting strength training was that I live in a very rural area. So logistically, I could not get to a gym or to an in-person personal trainer. And I had had back surgery in 2012. So every time I had begun to do any sort of strength training on my own, I ended up with back pain. And I was very nervous about that just because I didn't want another injury. So it was very reluctant to even really kind of start that journey on my own. So when I was selected for the beta test group, everything changed for me. I had some background in um, eating according to macros and I had started working on my nutrition in 2012. And um, I was in a place where I knew enough that with a good coach, I knew I could transform. And that's really where my, my journey began with Holly. And um, I was just another member of the group. Not that Holly saw me that, that way, but I felt I'm just another member of the group. There's certainly not anything special about me. There's not anything 
different about me that would give me any more advantage than anyone else. Um, but I was on my own journey in that. And so I did a, I had a DEXA scan done that showed how much body fat I had in relation to the muscle mass that I currently had before the project began, because in my head, I knew I was on a journey and that was really what led Holly to say, Hey, wait a minute, let's take a deeper look because she knew that I was serious in wanting to continue this journey. And now I have a lot more muscle mass than when I first started my journey with Holly and the journey itself hasn't been without its ups and downs for sure. Uh, we started in December of 19 in June of 2020, I was having some ankle issues, went to the doctor and learned that I had a longitudinal fracture in my tibia. And so, you know, I was like, okay, Holly, this is what I have. How do I work around it? I'm not stopping. I'm not going to sit down and do nothing. So that was a great place for her to coach me in. Okay. Mentally, these are the things you need to do to work through this. And then physically, let's see how we can work around. What can you do? You know, visit with your doctor. Let's see what you can do. And I came out stronger on the other side. So that's kind of how we got started and where we are today. More muscle mass for sure. And um, I've learned a lot about progressive overload and how to continue this going forward for the rest of my life. Because there's no, um, there's no destination. There's no end point. You're never going to arrive at, wow, I'm fit and I don't have to do anything. That's not part of the equation, which I think sometimes in the back of our mind, we hope that that's the case. Um, but it's definitely a lifestyle. Yeah, I love it. And Jennifer, if you're cool with it, which I know you are, um, I was able to cue up that long photo comparison that we have of you. And I'll share it on screen in, in a little bit after we talk to Heidi. And we're going to really talk about where both of you are. Heidi, I'm not going to share your photos unless you want me to, if you're okay with it, because I'm kind of springing it on you here. Um, but I know Jennifer's cool with me sharing photos, but I could also queue up some of the year before and after. Okay. Yeah, totally cool. <laughs> yep. Nope. Totally cool. And that's why I didn't. I know Jennifer's cool with it. So um, we can really just talk about when we get towards the end of the episode, I really want to talk about how each one of you has transformed and where you are now as compared to where you were, because, you know, for Heidi, who I want to hear your story now, you know, Heidi, for you, a big part of it is your performance and how much better you feel on the bike and the muscle mass that you've gained and the benefit that you've received because of that. So I would love it if you would share with us a bit about your story. Where were you? At the start of your strength training journey, whenever, wherever that was, whatever that was, whatever it looked like, and how what the journey has been like for you up until now. Okay. Um, I guess when I first started getting into working out, it was very unregimented. I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a clue. Um, I didn't even know what a workout was supposed to be. I just wanted to shoot baskets or run sprints, and I thought getting my heart rate up was how it was going to get strong. And that was my workout. And it just wasn't working. And I ride dirt bikes. I have been for a long time. And I struggled with strength. You know, when I went down, I have to pick the bike up and I couldn't pick the bike up. My husband had to do it for me. And so it's like, you know what, if I'm going to do this, I going to need to be able to pick the bike up myself. And so um, it just so happened that a new friend that I had met asked me to work out with her. She was from the CrossFit community and I was scared to death because it's like, oh my gosh, I was so intimidated. And um, she wanted to, an accountability partner, somebody to keep her on task, you know. And so I went through that. We would work out one day a week and I would be sore for the entire week. And it just, it was killing me. And after the workout, I'd flop on the floor and just be absolutely exhausted. Well, then it progressed to she got pregnant and I had to move on to something else. But I realized she was stronger than me in every single aspect. I couldn't match her in any, any form ex except maybe jump roping or running. And so I kind of got big on PRs. You know, I got to get my deadlift up and I got to get my, my back squat up. And I'm, you know, that's all I focused on. So 
I did a program called Strong Lifts 5x5. Five five, mm -hmm. And um, there was just, I think there was four or five moves, deadlift, overhead press, bench bent press. Row, and the bench. Mm -hmm. And it was work. I was getting strong. I was amazed. I was moving forward. But then the five by five went to a three by three, and then it went to a one by three, and then it went to, it completely wrecked me. Yeah. It destroyed me. Yeah. My central nervous system was burned out. My adrenals were shot. You know, I don't know how long it took me to recover. Probably a good, I don't know, it was months, it seemed like. And it's like, you know, I've gotten so far so already. I've got the spark for it. I need to get stronger. I got to get back out there and do something. And so... At that time, also, I probably was around 47, I think. I'm not sure. But my hormones really took a dive. So, I mean, I had everything going against me, perimenopause, and it was just, it was a disaster. So I started looking up um, stuff on YouTube about women who are in perimenopause and, and trainers and what, how to work out in that time of your life. And all I found was pretty depressing, I felt. Um, because all they told me was things that I couldn't do. You mm -hmm. can't do this, you can't do that. You can do three pound dumbbells and you have to be careful. And it was just- We it have was to talk about this. this. We need to talk about this part. I'm so glad that you mentioned that, Heidi. I'm going to have you keep going. But as soon as you know, you share, we have to talk about this because all three of us, Jennifer's got a very unique story. And I got to be honest, this perimenopause conversation, I had the same exact experience, Heidi. It's so depressing. And there are experts out there who are talking about perimenopause and it's a very bleak conversation. And that is exactly why we are here to show you that perimenopause and menopause does not have to mean it's a downhill slide here on out. So diatribe over Heidi continue, yeah. but let's make sure we all three of us have a round table about that. Yeah, for sure. So I like to watch summits. I sign up for any kind of summit, a lot of hormone summit, health, nutrition. And there was one called um, Fabulous Over 40. Mm -hmm. And I saw that you were on there, this girl named Holly Perkins. And I'm like, well, I, I never heard of her, but you know, and I was so down with what I've already heard about working out at my age that I thought I almost didn't watch. But once you started talking, you were all about everything that we can do. You were uplifting and motivated, motivating. And, you know, you can build muscle. You can um, transform your body. I mean, you can get lean. It doesn't matter your age. And that was exactly what I needed to hear. It was just like a light to me. It was everything. So then um, I bought your book and then I did uh, the hard, the hard gainer a couple times. And I just kept getting more and more momentum and I started seeing some changes. Um, and then I bought, um, one, two and three glutes project that you had. And what really catapulted me, I feel was the glutes project ultimate that that's when really things got hardcore serious for me. And I started seeing changes. And I could not believe that I could do the amount of volume in that program. That, for me, mentally, that just, that opened the door to so many things. It just was incredibly helpful. And um, after that, um, you know, and then doing, I love doing Glutey Gang with you every week. That's been huge. And then the program you wrote me, um, just fantastic and how it's helped me in my sport. I compete in trial. So you need to have a strong upper body, you need a strong lower body. And it's it's been night and day. I can pick up my bike easy. I can pick up anybody's bike now. And so uh, what it's done for me, um, physically, mentally, the whole nine yards. It's, yeah, I'm not the same person. I used to be shy. I am introverted. That hasn't changed, but I can be extroverted too, but the shyness went away. My confidence went up. Um, I'm doing really well. I, my last race, I competed against 11 guys and one girl and I got second place. So, I mean, that was very uplifting to me. That's amazing. Um, so, you know, I'm participating in a very male dominated sport. There's no women's class. So it, that makes it even harder, but it also makes me push harder and, 
So yeah, strength training and, you know, I can't, I have to talk about the nutrition aspect because that's been huge as well. Properly fueling my body is just, it's a, it's not negotiable along with working out. So that's kind of, and you know, you, oh, you go through these phases, like I went through the PR phase and then it's like, I just want to feel good. I want to feel good. And then it's like, I want to get strong. I want to build muscle. And now I, I really want to look better. So I'm, I'm, that's kind of where I'm looking at now is I want to look good. I want, you know, I'm going to put the work in. I want to see things. Yep. I want to see what my hard work is doing. And it, yep. it's motivating to look in the mirror and it pushes you even more. So yeah. it's so true. And, you know, you gosh, you shared so many nuggets that I want to talk about. And we will. I'm going to bring us into a bit of just like a roundtable conversation here in a moment. But, you know, something that I'm a fierce advocate of in my community and in general, in the interviews that I do with magazines, anything that I do front facing or publicly is this. As women, we've been taught that you're vain or shallow if you admit you want to look better or you want to look good. And somewhere in society, many of us have picked up this notion that they can't say, I work out because I want this, 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 and I want to look better. It's almost like you should be shamed for saying that. And I wholeheartedly disagree. Because if it is important to you, and some people it's not, but if it is important to you that your hard effort in your workouts and your nutrition shows on the outside, I think that's a very respectable thing. And we do have to put into place certain programming so that your body does show all of the efforts that you're putting in in the gym. For me and a lot of my clients, Life really changes when I feel I look good, irrespective of what that picture is. When I feel I look good, when you feel you look good according to your standards, that is a huge game changer in, ter in terms of your spirit. And just like Heidi said, in terms of your confidence, um, in so many ways, it's definitely not just about the aesthetics, but I want to invite and welcome you to be okay with that being a motivation because it's so gratifying to get there, especially if you're not in your 20s or early 30s. So let's talk a little bit around these numbers that we call age. On the one hand, I don't love talking about age a whole lot because so many women use it to limit themselves and it's absolutely not a limitation. But I also think the fact that each one of us is older than you think we are is really impressive and really inspiring. And so to some degree, age does matter because I want to show to you that it doesn't matter, right? I want to show to you that there are women of every single age beating the odds, getting in great shape, competing professionally, adding lean muscle mass like Jennifer did, and I'm going to show you in a moment, and that it's absolutely possible for you too. So let's have a roundtable conversation real quick about this, this thing called perimenopause and menopause. Because every single time I do a Google search or allow myself to read something an expert has written on perimenopause, I have the same exact experience that Heidi did. I, I find it really depressing yeah. and because a lot of it, oh, we, we, can, we can go in so many directions with this, but inherently by the nature of what happens to your body in your 40s and 50s, there is an aspect of it that, um, how shall we say, is definitely a change in your mindset it signals the fact that you're not in your 20s anymore. And that already is something that we have to struggle with. So when you lob on top of it, all of the physiological changes, it's just too much. So instead, it's important to really show you watching that yes, perimenopause and menopause and the decline of estrogen is a very real thing. 
And it absolutely brings forward new challenges in your health. And every single one of us can show to you that you can overcome those changes. So Jennifer, will you share a little bit about your story? Because I think yours is pretty darn powerful. So I actually had a complete hysterectomy when I was 27. I did not begin my fitness journey until I was 36. That's when I began running. And honestly, it was um, for my own sanity. I was a business owner and I had teenage kids and I needed the mental break that running provided for me. Um, and I guess maybe because that happened so early in life, I didn't ever consider really the physical changes that went along with that or even the emotional changes. I just knew that I had to survive and um, physically moving my body was a big part of that. It gave me something that was just for me because it wasn't about running a business or raising children or being a wife or taking care of my home. It was something that was just for me. So mentally it was good. And then the changes that I began to see in my body were huge. Even though I was just running at the time, just moving my body made such a difference in the way that I felt and the way my clothes fit, all of those things. But really for me, the way that I felt was the biggest change. Um, other cards that I kind of had stacked against me, I guess, um, I've, I've done some genetic testing. I have a predisposition to carry excess body fat. Most of the women in my family are, um, would actually be classified as obese. So, you know, I have the genetics stacked against me too, as most women tell me that I, that I work with. Um, there are a lot of cards stacked against every single one of us. It doesn't matter where you come from or yeah. what stage of life you're in, whether you had a hysterectomy or you're still in your childbearing years, or if you're in perimenopause, but you can overcome any of those challenges with strategic programming. And I think that's the biggest thing that I want women to understand is that you can't just go out willy nilly. As Heidi said in the beginning, you know, she was trying this and that and couldn't really figure out where to go. Save yourself some time, get some good programming, get your nutrition in order, start working out and know that this, you know, the, the way that it looks is probably going to change over time. And so far as what you can physically do, because the stronger you get, the more you can do. But you have to start somewhere and you have to know that this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life because I know it's going to help me age well. I'll be 49 in a couple of weeks, by the way. And I'm going to show your photos in a couple of minutes because this is what I really want to point out with what Jennifer just shared. Jennifer had the card stacked against her at a young age. It would have been so easy for her to say, well, I can't get in shape because I have had a complete hysterectomy or I'll never be able to add muscle because I've had a complete hysterectomy or, well, you know, obesity runs in my family and genetically I'm predisposed to obesity. So that's why I carry an extra 10 pounds or 15 pounds. She so could have easily gone down the path of a self-fulfilling prophecy but instead, her mindset was different. She didn't buy into those diagnoses, right? Same for me, same for Heidi. All three of us have had our struggles and all three of us have been like, no, I am going to overcome it. I'm going to work through it and with it. This isn't denial. This isn't self-punishment. This isn't hustle culture. This is in light of my personal health struggles, I'm going to learn how I need to work through it. And it's so powerful. So um, I want to right now, quickly if I can, guys, P.S., this is um, new territory for me, but I'm gonna try and share my screen with you guys real quick. I don't know if I can. Uh, it's gonna take me a minute to set it up. So I wanna share with you guys in a moment part of Jennifer's chronology in terms of where she started and where she is now, because it just tells an unbelievable story in terms of what's possible. While I cue that up, Heidi, I want to hear from you in terms of what your struggles were around um, whether, we, you know, we call it some of your central nervous system challenges, thyroid challenges, and or hormonal challenges, and how you've chosen 
to work through it? What has your mindset been specifically as you've navigated it in the past few years? Okay. You know, I want to say, if you want to show mine, you're welcome to. I changed okay. my mind. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not going to, but we'll talk about it and I'll approve it with you offline because this is going to become a blog. So maybe we'll share it on the blog. Okay. okay. Um, so my mindset was um, that this is non-negotiable. I am working out. This is a part of my life. Nothing's going to come before working out. Nothing. If somebody invites me to something, um, depending on the time, I'm going to be late or whatever. So that's just it because I know how important it is. I know how good it makes me feel. So I have that mindset. And so I have thyroid and adrenal issues that would, would come up so that and not sleeping well with my hormones dropping and waking up and having night sweats. So you wake up and you're dehydrated and you're tired. So you're starting the day off in the hole, so to speak. But what I would do, like for the Glutes Project Ultimate, I would go out, do what I could. I would come in the house and take a nap. And then I would go back out and finish. Whatever it took, I was going to complete this. And so I just, you know, it, it, it is hard. You know, I, I use essential oils. I do anything that I possibly can nutritionally to support myself, um, get as much rest as I possibly can. Um, but that was, that sleep for me still is a challenge. I'm kind of getting a handle on it, but it's still a challenge that I'd like to conquer. Um, I, last year I fractured my collarbone and I hurt a couple ribs and I was bound and determined I'm going to keep going. I would do whatever exercise that didn't hurt that. And it just gives you, once, you, once you've been doing this and once it makes you feel so, it, it gives you a powerful feeling that you can just, like I said, after doing the Glutes Project Ultimate, I felt like I can do anything. I, I, it's amazing. Um, so after doing that, I lost my train of thought now. That's good. Um, you just, you just want to continue on. You want to keep going. And the strength training and the program that you wrote, because you, you programmed in some physical therapy moves, healed me 100%. It's, it's, it's quite remarkable. And along with chiropractic and, and other things that I did, it just, it just keeps you going. You just, it just, you just have to keep on going. You, we're capable of so much. Yeah. And you just don't realize it. You always hear people say this, but it's it's so true. You don't realize what you're capable of. You're capable of a lot. And I had that. And then on the program that you wrote me a four month program and I was down to two weeks left of the program, two weeks left. And then what happens? I get sick with that. I don't even know if I can say the word. Yeah. <laughs> How crazy it is around here. And it's like, it just derailed me. Yeah. I, mean, I couldn't do anything. I was done. But you, I just kept, it actually was good for me because it made me slow down. It made me reassess things. And it actually made me stronger when I came back to do my workouts. I didn't let it um, destroy me. I, I didn't think, oh my gosh, I've, I've almost completed this. And then look what happened. You know, I wasn't going to go there. I had to keep moving forward and I just got better and better after that. And I just keep moving up after that. Um, you know, everything doesn't go like this. It goes like this and it goes like this. And then <laughs> you're even stronger because you yeah. went down. That's what I've noticed. Totally. And, oh my gosh. you know, now, you know, I love doing the Strength Society and the Glutey Gang and, and my programs. And it just keeps me ground it. It keeps, it's, it's so good for me mentally and physically. And, you know, I just, I lost my sister a few weeks ago. So, but I just kept going out and just kept go, getting in the gym. And it just, you know, when you go out in the gym, it's a stress reliever. You're not thinking about all, all this other stuff. You're just yeah. thinking about your technique. It's my quiet time. It's my happy place. And you just keep pushing through all those struggles because we're all going to have them. They might manifest in different ways, but they're all things we, we have to go through. Yeah. And if you use it as, um, as a learning, you know, you're going to be better on the other side. 
So, yeah. You know, something that so jumped out at me with that share. And by the way, I am so sorry about your sister. I did not know that. Sending you so much love. Um, you know, struggles and hurdles. And just like Heidi said, um, you know, let's call it challenges or setbacks are inevitable for every single one of us. I could share a ton of stories. Jennifer could share a ton of stories. It's inevitable. And that is partially why the success is so sweet. And the magic happens as you're going through it at these key turning points when you decide I'm not going to go down, I'm going to keep going, is when the real transformation happens. It actually happens in the muck. It happens at that moment when you've had a tibial fracture or a collarbone fracture or whatever it may be. It's at that moment when you get knocked down that you decide I'm either going to succumb to it or fight my way out of it. And fighting your way out of it can be loving. It can be self-supportive. It can be self-honoring. It can be a beautiful, positive thing. It doesn't have to come from a place of, like I said, um, you know, hustle culture or struggle culture or anything like that. It's really just what do I want for the rest of my life and what am I capable of? Just like Heidi said, it's like we hear that phrase, you're powerful beyond measure. And so many of us walk around thinking, mm, I don't know about that. I'm not so sure. I haven't experienced that. That's because you have to work through those struggles to get there. So I'm sad to report, I'm not going to be able to share my screen, Jennifer, and share your photo because I had technology is not going to support me right now without resetting my Chrome. And I don't want to reset my Chrome because we'll lose this, lose this live stream. I'm totally bummed. But this episode is going to be um, shared on YouTube and on my blog. If you're watching this on the blog, you can just look down below. And um, I'm going to share with you some visuals, Jennifer's progression of where she was and where she is now, potentially maybe some of Heidi's or even Heidi on her dirt bike, because it's the coolest thing when you see her in her gear and on her bike. It's so rad. So um, we will do that next. But for now, what I would like to hear is if each one of you would just share a little like um, where you are now, how as very specifically as compared to where you were and where you are now, how your life is different in all the ways, how you're different in your life, not just in your body, so that people can really see how you got to where you are in relationship to those specific struggles that we've all gone through. Jennifer, talk to us. Um, well, I, I don't know. That's, that's a tricky one. I have always been a very strong person. I have always been very confident. Um, and a lot of that is just because of things that I've experienced in my life. I think now more than ever, because I, I would say that I feel better now in this body, in my mind than I did in my early thirties. I feel stronger. I feel more powerful. I feel more capable, more able. And I know that I am going to continue to age well. And I also know that this isn't the end of my journey. Like this, this is not where I want to stop. So I said, I'm turning 49 in a couple of weeks and I have a goal to be in the best shape of my life by the time I turn 50 years old. I, I have had so many people say to me, well, when you turn 50, yeah. oh, it's all downhill. And I'm like, maybe for you, but that is not the end of the road for me. I mean, my mom lived to be 93 and that's what I'm planning. So if I have another 44 years in this body, I'm going to make it the best it can possibly be. I have a two and a half year old grandson. I have um, a granddaughter on the way in October. And I have every intention of being the fun grandma who takes them zip lining and kayaking and all the things. And I just have so much more that I want to get out of life because when it's done, it's done. And I, I have no intention of slowing down or sitting down or saying, well, this is what I've achieved in my life because I got a lot of years left. And even if I don't, I'm going to act like I do. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, we don't get to choose that, but I can absolutely ch choose 
how much sleep I get every night, how well I feel in the morning, how I nourish myself, um, how much water I drink. All of those things are part of the picture. And I choose that every single day. Yeah. You know, I always talk about your body is your vehicle to go through the next 30, 40, 50 years. And there's so much you can do to improve this vehicle. And when you do, you're going to enjoy your life so much more. And that's what this is about. Jennifer really spoke to it so beautifully. Every woman I talk to talks about in her future, she wants to be able to, not every woman, but a lot of women, play with the grandkids or keep up with life or stay active or um, be healthy and not go out like a parent did. And you have 100% ability and dominion over your vehicle to make it better from where you are, irrespective of what your goals are. Heidi, I would love to hear from you. Well, I'm 53 and I feel the best I've ever felt in my life. And I'm, I'm excited about life. I'm excited about what's coming about. Um, you know, I'm more confident. I feel better. I feel stronger. Every, everything across the board is better. And it just, it's, it's very uplifting. And um, yeah, I'm nothing like I was before. N nothing like I was. I remember, I think I was in my late 30s and just, just squatting down like in a catcher's position to get in the bottom of your cupboard. And then I stood up and it's like, I'm groaning. It's like, how old am I? This is ridiculous. Yeah. Not anymore. I mean, I can, th that's not an issue. Or even, you know, like, um, putting a case of water into your cart at the grocery store. So much is easier. Life is easier. And I don't know. It's, it's. Yeah. I love that example. That, Heidi, that's such a great example. I remember a couple, just a couple of months ago, I took a trip to LA um, and I was going to be there for three weeks. And I had some, I had a variety of things that I had to do. So I had to bring a lot of stuff with me. I often travel with my camera and my microphone and all kinds of stuff. So my suitcase was 53 pounds when I got to the airport, wow. which is over the bag limit. So I took out three pounds, put it in my satchel and I had this suitcase that was 50 pounds. So I got to LA and I was staying with a friend who I hadn't stayed with before and I arrived at her house at 1130 at night after traveling all day long. And there were five different sets of, of stairs that I had to get that 50 pound suitcase up. <laughs> and I literally was like, I got out of the cab and saw the first set of stairs and was just like, okay, I can get through these stairs, got up those stairs. Then I saw another flight of stairs. Then I saw another, I mean, it was literally five flights of stairs. Wow. My bedroom was on the third floor. There were stairs to get to her um, condominium. And I literally was like, I, I don't know if I can do this. But then I was like, this is why I deadlift four steps at a time. Let's see what happens. And I did it. And my friend was like, I don't know how you did that. You know, I wouldn't have been able to help you. And you just did that. And so when I got to the top, like I said, it was 1130 at night. I was exhausted. I traveled all day. And I was like, I just did that. How effing cool is that? What would we have done? My suitcase would have stayed in her living room for the week that I was staying with her had we not been able to get it upstairs. And that is so empowering as a woman to know yeah. if I need to pick up something that's 50 pounds, like the water jug at the grocery store or the grandchild or even a child, whatever it is, like that is so powerful to know I'm going to be able to do this and get through my life. It's big. It's really big. Okay. One more question for each of you. Two questions, actually two questions. Jennifer, what's your favorite strength training exercise? Bulgarian split squats. Ah, okay. Heidi. It always used to be the deadlift. I don't know if it still is. Oh, that's a tough question. There's so many good ones. I'm, you know, I think I'm going to, it's deadlift and I like the um, pull down. That pull down. The lap, yeah. it just oh. makes my back feel so good. So I love yeah. that. 
Ah, okay, so oh I have to decide on mine. This was an impromptu quiz. Oh, you guys, this is so hard for me. That's like asking a mother of 10 children to say which one is her favorite. Yeah, this is the right. choice right now, you guys. I don't know. Oh, I would have to say, whew, and this is surprising, either split squat or walking lunges because they both do so much yeah. for your body. And that's a statement because if you know me, hands down, in 30 years of being in the fitness industry, there is not an exercise I struggled more with than split squat. And I'm now mastering it. It is a game changer. I will share pictures with you guys at some point. My hamstrings and my butt are changing like I've never seen them in my entire life. And I will be 50 this year. So I would have to say split squat or walking lunges. Okay, Jennifer, what is your most dreaded strength training exercise? Deadlifts. Ah, no way. Okay, Heidi? It's either, it might be the split squat or alternating reverse lunge because it takes so much out of me. Yeah, <laughs> it does. So I, I have to. Obviously, I must, those must be the ones I need to work on. Yep. But yeah, yep. I would more on that in a moment. Mine, barbell back squat or a hack squat machine. Hack squat makes me angry. <laughs> oh, you know, but you don't, not too many people use hack squats these days in light of the current affairs. Um, so I would have to say a barbell back squat for me. Dreaded, dreaded. So on that note, we're going to end here in just a moment. I want to leave you with this. There really is a lot of truth too. the exercises that you dread the most are the ones that really do hold the most power for transforming your body. And if you can learn to start workshopping in a very gentle way, those exercises that you dread and you give it time, it will change your body. So we're going to wrap up. You guys, thank you so much. I think it's like the coolest thing ever that the Thank two of you, you are here for this first episode of Hot Tea with Holly. I love you both. And I'm so honored to get to work with you. I'm inspired by both of you. And I know that every woman who watches this episode is going to be so inspired. So thank you to both of you for being who you are. You are such gifts. And that is it for today's episode. I'll see you guys next week for Hot Tea with Holly. Jennifer and Heidi, thanks so much for being Thank here. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.